Science teacher Ray. Happy Sunday. Glad you could join us today for our class. This is week 11 of our virtual class in children's ministry for the fifth and sixth graders here at Calvary Chapel East Anaheim. Hey, you know what? I got to tell you, last week was our first week. We opened up and it was pretty awesome. We actually got to go to church in person. Now, I apologize to you kids, but uh, no children's ministry. So, but uh, I did get to see some of the guys and girls from my class. I got to see Matthew waited in line right in front of Matthew. And I saw Ainsley. Ainsley was leaving. And uh, so I got to say hi to her. I miss all of you guys. It was really nice to be able to see Ainsley and, uh, and Matthew. I saw Cadence and Cora running around. Uh, I didn't get to see anybody else really. Uh, I saw some old pastors from uh, Harvest came and, and visited, but um, I didn't get to see anybody else. I went to second service because I always teach first service. So then I went to second service. So if you're if you're at first service, uh, maybe this morning, uh, maybe Chase, maybe you're at first service this morning. Maybe you're watching this online, uh, or maybe you didn't go to church, uh, or maybe uh, you know Kalen, maybe you're at first service. Uh, I don't know, but if you are, look for me. I'll be in line, waiting in line for second service. When you guys leave, walk down the line. I'll probably be there. And we could say, hey, what's up in person? And uh, that'd be kind of cool. It'd be cool for me, maybe not for you, but I would like to see you. It would be awesome. So a couple announcements. Usually we do announcements and then we pray and we do praise reports and all that. A couple announcements today. We've got church again, live. We had it Wednesday night too. And again today, we're back in church except for children's ministry, no Sunday school. Uh, but that's pretty cool. Now, again, this is nine o'clock service. I will be there at the 11 o'clock service, uh, Lord willing, I get there on time. So look me up. Hey, technical difficulties. So look me up if you happen to, uh, to be there. Um, another announcement is, hey, I'm wearing my Talent Camp shirt! This is the Talent Camp shirt from 2019 uh, because I don't have a Talent Camp shirt for 2020. But one of the announcements is that we are doing Talent Camp. However, it's gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna be virtual, it's gonna be online. It's gonna be actually a lot easier for you. You don't have to leave the house and come. I know you're not gonna be able to jump up and down as much in person, but you can jump up and down and sing the songs there. I'll be teaching every day, Lord willing, and uh, we've got some really cool things planned. So be looking out for signups for Talent Camp 2020. Talent Camp 2020. It's gonna be awesome. So as we always do, we always pray before we start. And if you've got prayer requests or praise reports, if you're watching this on Facebook, you can put them down below. Just put them down below and let me know what your prayer requests are. And also let me know if you have any praise reports. LJ, I haven't heard from you for a while since your last time you commented, hoping everything's going good with you. So if you're watching on Facebook, right below here, comment some praise reports or prayer requests. I'm still in pain. In fact, if you saw me last week, I was walking with Cain. Not because I'm an old man. It's because I've got some pain in my leg and uh, back issues. So uh, I would appreciate if you'd still pray for me for that. Uh, and I'll pray for you, whatever you guys need prayer for. So put them down below if you're watching on Facebook. Uh, sorry, YouTube doesn't let you put comments down. Sorry. And it's way too long for IGTV. So I can't put it on IGTV. Uh, another announcement, since I brought up IGTV, if you've got little sisters, little brothers, Every Tuesday at 10 a.m., Lord willing, I post story time with Teacher Ray for the little kids. So if you've got some younger brothers, younger sisters, uh, or if you're young at heart like me, you could check out on my Instagram, Teacher Ray Instagram page. They'll take you right to my IGTV and you can watch story time on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Uh, we do different stories. There's sometimes we have a puppet show up and uh, hopefully this one will be really great. Uh, since I've been in pain, uh, last week we had a, a, one of the, a professor, a professor, uh, no wall, he came and he uh, uh, stood in for me uh, to read the story. And this week I'm still in a lot of pain, so probably I'll have uh, someone else sit in for me to read the story. Uh, but hey, check it out if you've got little ones, or again, if you're young at heart, Tuesdays, 10 a.m. 
on my Instagram page and I also put it here in uh, Facebook. In fact, you can scroll down and you can find all the other videos I've posted for the past 11 weeks of story time if you've got little ones. So let's go ahead and put our hands together because it is time to pray. So put your hands together, close your eyes, and let's pray before we start. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to be here virtually. Thank you for allowing us to be together uh, online. Thank you for the technology. And thank you for getting us loosened up a little bit so we can go back to into church live again to worship and praise you. So Heavenly Father, I ask that your hand will be upon everything that's going on at the church today. Everything that, that happens today in this lesson, help me not to mess up the lesson and help us all to learn from it and use this lesson in our daily lives. We thank you, Jesus. I also want to pray for everybody out there that is hurting, everybody that has sickness or pain or problems in their lives. I pray that you would touch their bodies, touch their hearts, touch their families, touch their lives and heal them, Lord. Hold them with your loving arms and just let them feel your comfort. Now, Heavenly Father, again, thank you for letting us be here. Help this message be a great message this morning. And we ask all this in your holy name. Amen. All right. Well, the next thing we always do is we always worship. But before we worship, I want you to grab your Bibles and I want you to be ready with a pen, paper, and a Bible. Open your Bible to John 4. We are going to be starting in verse 1. John 4, actually not in verse 1. We're going to be starting in um, John 4. What am I thinking? Yes, verse 1. We'll be in verse 1. John 4, verse 1. Open your Bibles and then put them down on the floor or the chair or wherever you're sitting and then stand up because that's what we do when we worship. Stand up and let's worship. Another new announcement for this is we're doing worship a little bit differently. Usually we do four songs in, in class and since we've been doing this virtually, we've only been doing one. But this song has to do with the message today. It's one of Pastor Raymond's original songs that he wrote years ago, and we don't have a video of the band playing it, but we do have a video of Pastor Raymond singing it, and we have the words on the screen. So it's probably gonna be a new song to you, but it's an awesome worship song. It's called Living Water, so I want you to stand up. I want you to learn this song this morning, and I want you to, it's really easy to learn, and when we get to the chorus, Living Water, I want you to belt it out as loud as you can because you're singing to Jesus. Are we ready? Let's worship! You are the Father of infinite mercy. I am a child of desperate need I hear you say Anyone who is thirsty Come to the well of life and drink I've wandered long In this desert of heartache I've walked this dry and weary land Unsatisfied and scarred by my mistakes Redemption's always been your plan This world has no claim I am sealed by your name Living
amen. I uh, can hear. I couldn't hear you singing. And uh, if you're in the service right now, 9 a.m., watching uh, Pastor Bob on stage, I hope you didn't sing it loudly. I hope you just kind of listened. I don't know. Chase, you got your earphones in? Uh, did, you, did you listen to the song? Is it pretty cool? I hope you didn't like belt it out really loudly while uh, Pastor Raymond was singing live on stage. So, okay. So as I said, we're in John 4 today. So grab your Bibles. Hopefully you're in John 4 with a pen and a paper or a pencil and a paper. We're going to ask a question. Our big picture question that we've been talking about during this series is what makes people special? What makes people special? And the answer is people are special because we, you and me, boy and girl, male and female, we are made in God's image. We are made in God's image and we are made to know him. We are made to worship him. We have a purpose on this earth and it's a very special purpose because we are special to God. And that special purpose is to know him, worship him, and we're going to find out today our purpose is to know him and make him known to others. All right. So that's our big picture question for this series. People are special because we are made in God's image to know him. Now, we're going to look at John 4, starting with verse 1. John 4, starting with verse 1. And my words are upside down. Come on. There it goes. I want you to read along with me, okay? Because this, uh, this is a great story, and I want you to listen really closely, follow along in your Bibles. We're actually going to start in verse two where it says, verse, excuse me, verse three of John four, verse three. So he, Jesus, left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Okay, now we're in verse four. Now he had to go through Samaria, so he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. Imagine, probably hot. Verse 7, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? Now his disciples had gone into the town to buy food. Okay, so if you ever want to know how many disciples it takes to screw in a light bulb, apparently all of them, because it takes all the disciples to go into town and buy food. I don't know about you, but usually I send one person, like I'll be at the office and hey, he wants to make a Starbucks run. I will, okay, you, here's my order, here's their order. Go get it and bring it back to all of us. Apparently, all the disciples had to go. Now, it might have been because, you know, some wanted to go to Chick-fil-A and others wanted to go to In-N-Out and I, I, I'm not sure, but maybe they went to different places to get food. I don't know. Sorry, Isaac, I went off on a tangent again. Here we go. Verse nine, the Samaritan woman said to him, let's back up because I really went off on a tangent there. Uh, verse seven, the Samaritan woman comes to draw water and Jesus says, will you give me a drink? Verse nine, the Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? That's because Jews did not associate with Samaritans. Now, in fact, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about this, but Jews and Samaritans didn't like each other and Samaritans didn't like Jews and Jews didn't like Samaritans. They didn't talk to each other. And a man would not, a Jewish man would not talk to a woman, a Jewish rabbi like Jesus would not talk to a woman in public, just come up and say, hey, give me a drink. Doesn't happen. So here she is, she says, you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? Verse 10, Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. What? So verse 11, she says, sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. How are you going to get this? How, where are you going to get this water, this living water? You don't even have a bucket and a rope. Then she says, are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it himself 
as did his sons and his livestock. I kind of picture that as in my mind is she's kind of being uh, sarcastic. <laughs> who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? You think you're greater than Jacob who died a long time ago? And you think you're greater? You could get this living water. You don't even have a bucket. You don't have a rope. How are you going to get this living water? 13, verse 13, Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Oh, verse 15, the woman said, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty. And then I don't have to keep coming back to this well to draw water over and over and over again every day in the hot sun. I add a little bit there. Verse 16, he told her. Totally changes the subject here. Totally changes everything and says, go, call your husband and come back. And then she says, I have no husband. And then Jesus says, you're right when you say that you have no husband. In fact, you have had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. And she was like, I don't even know this guy. And he's telling me all this stuff about me that he, he shouldn't know. She says in verse 19, Sir, huh, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. And he says, woman, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. So she's a Samaritan. She believes in the Messiah. She's waiting for the Messiah to come and explain everything to them. And verse 26, then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. He was telling her he was the Messiah. Verse 27, just then the disciples returned. They're like, well, what, are you, what is going on here? Why are you talking to this woman? Well, leaving her jar in verse 28, the woman goes back to town and finds people. And in verse 29, she says, come see a man who told me everything I did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way toward Jesus. Verse 31, uh, actually, we're going to skip down to, uh, let's see, that was verse 29. Okay, so verse 29, verse 30, they came out of the town and made their way toward Jesus. So we're going to end there for now. So first of all, Jesus is down here in Judea and he's going back to Galilee. Typically, the Jews who did not like the Samaritans, they did not go through Samaria. Samaritans didn't like Jews. Jews didn't like Samaritans. And so instead of going through Samaria, many, many Jews would take it upon themselves to go all the way around, cross the Jordan River, go up around and then come back through and cross the Jordan River again to get in Galilee, just to stay out of Samaria, just to stay away from those people. I don't know about you, but do you ever avoid somebody? Do you have people like maybe in school or, or maybe it's me at church? I don't know, do you try to avoid me? Uh, okay, so I know some of you guys, when you see me, outside of class and you don't have to say hi to me. You're like, I don't know that guy. And he, he, but I see you. I see you running the hype from me. T 
don't do that. It makes me sad. I saw Gavin last Sunday. It was really cool. Gavin used to be in the class. Came up, hey Gavin, we normally hug, but you know, he's still like three feet taller than I am now. But it was cool to see him. So uh, please, be a Gavin when you get out of my class. When you see me somewhere, yeah, acknowledge me and say, hey, what's up, DJ Ray? But back to our lesson, usually they go around. Jesus went right through Samaria and stopped at the well. In fact, he stops at this well in Samaria that was known as Jacob's well. The well that was Jacob's well given to Joseph where they fed their livestock, where they fed their people. So while he's there, this Samaritan woman comes to fill water. Now back then, you know, you don't just turn on the tap. Okay, you don't go to the refrigerator and put your cup under there and get the water out and the ice. No, no, you had to walk to the well, put the bucket down, get the well, and then walk back with all your water. It's a, it's a big job. That was a lot of work. So the Samaritan woman comes and she stops at the well and she's getting ready to get water. And there's Jesus, tired from his long journey. It's about noon, it's probably warm sits down at the well. Do you think it was a coincidence that he sat down at the well and all his disciples went off to go get, buy food in the town? It wasn't a coincidence. Jesus was there because he knew she would be there. So he asked her for a drink and then he explains to her about the spirit of God and living water that only he can give. She goes immediately back after he talks to her a little bit and tells her all these secrets that no one knows except for her and no stranger would know. She goes back and tells the people in town, you've got to come see this man who told me things about me, who knew everything about me. I've never even met him. He says he's the Messiah. Could this be the Messiah? Hey, John, let's go. Hey, Frank, let's go. Hey, Susan, let's go see him. So the crowd goes and they see Jesus. She was immediately outspreading the good news. She met the Messiah and then she went back and she started spreading the good news, the gospel message, the message that the Messiah had come. Now, let's go back to John 4, and let's pick up reading John 4, and we're going to start now in verse 39 to 42, just a couple of verses, and listen to this. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. Remember? She went and got him, brought them to Jesus, and many of the people in town believed in him. He told me everything I ever did, she said. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and Jesus stayed for two days. Can you imagine those two days of having Jesus there, talking with Jesus, listening to Jesus, hearing Jesus talk about the kingdom of God? Verse 41, because of his words, Many more became believers. A lot of them believed in Jesus because of that, those two days spending time with him. Verse 42 says, They said to the woman, We no longer believe just because what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. Huh. The woman went and shared her testimony to the people in the town. She went and said, come, talk to this guy. He's the Messiah. That was her testimony. We all have a testimony. Do you have a testimony? Yes, you do. You have a testimony if you believe in Jesus. I pray that some, somewhere somebody came to my class and says, I came to Teacher Ray's class and I never even heard of Jesus, or I didn't know much about Jesus, and Teacher Ray told me about Jesus and now I looked into it for myself and now I go to church and now I'm learning about him and now I believe. I pray that's happening to you, to somebody in my class. But it happened to those men. 
That woman went to those, men, those people, those men, those women in the town, told them about Jesus, and then brought them to Jesus. And like we read in that last verse, the men said, okay, we don't believe just because of what you said now. We looked into it ourselves and now we believe. How many of you have shared your testimony with others? How many of you have told your friends, your family about Jesus? We are special because we are made in God's image to know him and to make him known to others. If you had the cure for cancer, you would not keep it to yourself. You would share it with others so they could be cured. Well, we have the cure for cancer. That cancer, the worst cancer in the world is called sin. And our testimony, our going to other people and telling them about what Jesus did in our lives and bringing those people to Jesus, that can cure them of that horrible cancer called sin. And then they come to church and they learn more about Jesus. And just like those men and women said, we don't believe because of you only. Now we've looked into it ourselves and we believe that he is the Messiah. That is awesome. Let me ask you a question. Can a person get into heaven by doing enough good things? Can you give money to the church? Can you help the poor? Can you feed people? Can you give people jobs? Can you, can you care for the sick? Can you do so many good things that God looks at you and says, you know what? You can go to heaven. Right there, Jackson, you're, you're in because you're such a nice guy. Can you do enough good things to get into heaven? What do you think? Can you? Answer honestly. The Bible says, Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You've sinned, I've sinned, your parents sinned, my parents sinned, your brothers, your sisters, your friends. Everyone has sinned and everyone has missed the mark. Everyone has fallen short. Everyone has not lived up to what God expects. Because we're not perfect, we can't be perfect. We're all sinners. So, since we're all sinners, that makes us have to be away from God because sin and light and darkness don't mix. If we're all sinners, we have to be separated from God. How is being apart from God like being in the dark? How is being apart from God like being in the dark? The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. The cost of sin, the penalty, the price for sin is death and separation from God forever. But the good news of the gospel is that God didn't want anybody to be separated. God didn't want anybody to be in the dark and away from him. God is light. He wanted everybody to be with him. And that good news, that verse that we've been talking about, you all know, and if you don't know it, you should memorize it, is John 3, 16, which shows how much God loves you. For God loved the whole world, everybody in it, that he gave his only son, his one and only son, who was sinless, who was perfect, who had never done anything wrong, given to die on the cross to take the penalty of your sin and my sin so that when we die, if we believe in him, we shall not, we will not perish, we will not die we, and go to hell. We will not be separated from God forever in darkness. No, 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 no. We will have eternal life with him. Can I get an amen for that? I said, can I get an amen? Oh, I can't wait to hear that live because you guys are really good at that. Our story point for today's lesson. Jesus gives the Holy Spirit to those who believe. Jesus gives us the Holy Spirit when we believe. Have you ever tried to talk to somebody about Jesus? Have you ever tried to witness like that woman did, the Samaritan? And you're like, I don't know what to say. I'll sound stupid. 
The Holy Spirit that lives within you when you believe in Jesus can help you give, give you strength and help you say the right things. Whenever you see somebody that you need to talk to about Jesus, pray to God first. Pray the, for, the, for the, the right words. Pray that he would fill you with his spirit so that you can witness to that person. I do it every time I go, before I teach Sunday school, I say, Lord, please don't, don't let me mess up the message. Please let me have the right words because I, I tend to blah, 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 a little bit too much and I go off on tangents, like Isaac says, and uh, it's hard to kind of focus. The Holy Spirit is given to those who believe. In the Bible, in John 4, 37, 39, it says, Jesus talking, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Living water, the same living water that Jesus was telling that Samaritan woman about. That water that you'll never thirst again. You will never thirst again for the good stuff if you have Jesus in you. You will have the living water. The living water being the Holy Spirit that flows through you. And when you're talking to others about Jesus like that woman did, when you witness to people, the Holy Spirit can give you the strength and help you get the right words out of your mouth. I'll tell you, you should be memorizing scripture. But what's more importantly than knowing, oh, that's uh, John uh, 4, 37b through 38. What's more importantly is you know what the scripture says. I know it's hard to memorize scripture, but if you know, you can say, the Bible says the cost of sin is death. But the Bible also says that God doesn't want anybody to go to hell, so God sent his son, because anybody that believes in him will go to heaven and have eternal life. Those are concepts that you might not know exactly what the verse is, but if you know what the Bible says, the Holy Spirit can help you witness to others. If you have the Bible, God's word, in your heart, then Jesus, his word, can light your path. You can walk confidently knowing, see, I'm, I'm wearing the same shirt today, my, my talent cap shirt. If you have Jesus in your heart and you're reading the, the, the Bible and you're knowing the word of God and you're letting God talk to you through the Bible and you're praying to him, you can allow Jesus to light your path and you will, will not walk in darkness. You'll walk in the light of Jesus because Jesus is light. And Jesus can guide you when, when you're tempted to do something bad. If you're so close to Jesus, Jesus is there in your heart. Jesus can guide you away from that when you're tempted. So stay close to him and let Jesus light your path. And when you do witness, do me a favor, don't be her. You don't have to do this. You don't have to walk up to people and say, you're a sinner, I'm going. You're lucky you're not in this classroom right now because I just spit a little bit when I said that. Sorry, front row. You don't have to be like her and yell at people to get them into the kingdom of God. You can use the love of Jesus in your heart to witness to people about what God has done in your life. Don't be Ruby rude, rudeness. I just made that up, I don't know. <laughs> be sweet and gentle and calm when you're sharing Jesus with others. When people are hurting, they need the cure and you have it. So how can we remember to tell others about Jesus? How can we remember that we're walking along? How can we remember to tell others about Jesus? You know, when people say to me, how come you're always happy? That's because I got Jesus in my heart and I'm, I'm content in all things. Or, or, well, how come nothing ever gets you down? Or how come this whole COVID-19 thing and you're in pain and your back and your leg and, and business is, is, oh my gosh, are we all losing our jobs? And how can you still talk about Jesus and be happy and be content? It's because I trust in him. But let me, let me ask you, how can you remember to tell us about Jesus? Well, I have reminders, okay? I have my watch 
reminds me every so often what time it is. It also reminds me to stand every so often. And the funniest thing with my watch is, if I'm in church and we're worshiping, many times I'll look down at my watch and it'll say, oh, I can see you're working out. <laughs> no, no, I'm not at the gym, but I am working out in church. I'm worshiping him. That's one reminder. I also have different reminders like this ring here. This ring reminds me that, oh, hey, I'm married. I am married and I have a special person in my life that is my wife. I also have this ring here. I don't know if you can see it, but this ring here I wear often and it has a cross on it. It's on the other hand. And this ring reminds me I'm also a Christian and Jesus is in my heart. So watch what I say, watch what I do. I also have reminders here, be, like, like this one here. This, this reminds me that, that Lily is in my class and that there are some kids that do nice things for me. See, now Lily made this for me, says Teacher Ray. She brought it to me in class. Miss you, Lily, if you're, if you're there. Hey, Haley, uh, if, if, you're, if you're anywhere near uh, Lily, tell her I said, hey. Maybe put a reminder on your finger. Maybe if you're a girl, color one nail a little bit different color. Maybe put a cross on your finger to remind you at all times. Talk about Jesus. Uh, maybe put a rubber band around your wrist. Maybe uh, wear a pin or maybe take a, a sticky, a sticky paper and uh, write it down. Tell us about Jesus. If it was me, I'd have to do this and I'd have to walk around with a sticky paper right on my forehead because I, I forget things a lot. Whatever it is, do something to remind you to tell others about Jesus. So when you are in a place where someone is hurting or needs to hear about Jesus, you're there and you're ready. And the message of the gospel is that God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to die on the cross to take that penalty for all of our sins so that we can believe in him and not go to hell and not be separated from him, but spend forever in heaven with God. That's pretty cool. So I'm hoping that you took some notes. I'm hoping that you will uh, take my challenge, put a ring on, color your nail, put a, some, put a yellow sticky on your forehead, whatever it is, do something today and every day that will, will remind you to witness to people. It will remind you to tell others about Jesus. It will remind you to share the good news of the gospel. Amen? So, I love you guys, and uh, let's go ahead and close in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Jesus, for another message. Thank you for lesson number 11 about the Samaritan woman who witnessed to others and brought people to you. Help us to witness to others. Help us to know you more deeply by reading your word and praying to you. Help us to be able to take that and share you with others in our lives, our friends and our family through our testimony. Thank you, Jesus, for uh, loving us. Thank you for, again, letting us be together and keep us safe till we come back together in person. And please, Lord, let it be quickly because uh, we need to get back together in class. We love you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. In your holy name we pray, amen. All right, everybody, I will see you next week right here. I'm Teacher Ray. Love you.